Hey, welcome to ground level. I'm on the floor of my basement in my house. This is like the coolest part of the house. Not just in temperature, but in all the cool stuff that's down here. Speaking of cool stuff and ground level, we're going to take it down to the base level to our foundations for the next couple of weeks. And we're going to talk about some really key words that we talk about in church. Salvation, grace, God's will, Christianity, or being a Christian. These words are central to our faith, but you might not know exactly what they mean or what they were supposed to mean when they were written about in the Bible. What do you think of when you hear those words? Do positive things come to mind or negative? What's your history with those words? Have you ever heard those words? Well, the word that we're going to look at today is salvation. We're going to look at all the different types of uh, ways that this word has been used in Scripture. We call them their siblings, if you will. Save, saves, saved, saving, savior. This is all a variation of the word salvation, and it appears over 500 times in the Bible. It's a lot of times that one word is used. Well, what does it mean? What does it mean today? Is it different than what it means in the Bible? Yes, it is. This word has changed a lot just for me personally over the last several years growing up in the church, being a college student, being a young adult, and now being an adult adult and being a dad, what does this word salvation, how does it hit me today differently than it hits me before? So that's what we're going to talk about. Words, the basis of our communication and our life together. So how has this word changed or why? Well, because of my teachers. My teachers. We're going to do a cutaway right here. These are the authors and mentors that have inspired and informed my faith. Authors like Rob Bell, Marcus Borg, and then there's Brian McLaren. And a new one, John Shelby Spong. And an even newer one, Lenny Duncan, an African-American pastor in the denomination of the ELCA, of which we are a part. These teachers, these authors and scholars, theologians, they have informed and inspired my faith. They have saved my faith in many ways. And so, just as you look to me, I look to them. And this is our sermon on salvation. In Rob Bell's book, he reminds me just how important words are. They're the building blocks on everything. Words create new realities just like Ingredients put together new recipes and food on our plate. Words change everything. And like food, they sustain us in the short term and over the long haul. In Hebrew, the word word is devar. And when God devars, things happen. That word devar appears over 1,400 times in the Bible, so a lot is happening. God, the source of all being and energy, pouring forth into our lives continuously, not just above us, but around us and even, even within us. When God speaks, when God acts, things happen. And they might be completely invisible, but these words, these words of scripture, 
have, we call them living words, and they're with us, changing us and creating things in us in ways we can't totally understand. And when I read these words from this teacher of mine, something happens. It's not completely new. I mean, hello, God is creator. It's not a new concept. But when those words hit me, my faith is inspired. And something forms within me that wasn't there before or is strengthened that, was, that had been weakening. That's what words can do. And that's what this word salvation does. It saves us. And then there's my other go-to guy, Marcus Borg. You might recognize that name. I've talked about him in sermons before. In fact, one just recently on the Psalms, where he lays out kind of these different types of the Psalms. Well, he does that again with this word salvation. This word salvation today, most modern Christians really relate it to the concept of the afterlife or what happens when you die. That's salvation. But salvation is so much more. It's like this really cool action-adventure word. And so Borg says that there's different biblical frameworks that go with this word salvation. There's the framework of salvation as a return from exile or a, a homecoming. There's the framework of salvation as a uh, rescue from peril or danger. And there's, there's the framework as, of salvation as uh, liberation from captivity. So rather than me just keep telling you about words, I'd rather create a scene or an image. So let's turn now to our friends from the Star Wars cast about an example of the biblical framework of salvation as liberation from captivity. Hello Jabba. I'm Luke Skywalker, a Jedi. I've come to ask for the release of your prisoner, Han Solo. You will be very sorry if you do not release your captive to me. You will release him. Very well, you'll have to deal with the consequences. I'll be taking this, thank you. Come with me. I'm giving you one more chance, Jabba. Release him or die. You cannot hide forever, Luke. Give yourself to the dark side. It is the only way to save your friends. Your feelings for them are strong, especially for... Sister! So, you have a twin sister! If you will not turn to the dark side, then perhaps she will. No! Ah! 
I'll never turn to the dark side. You failed, your highness. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. So be it, Jedi. <laughs> if you will not be turned, you will be destroyed. <laughs> Now, young Skywalker, you will die. <laughs> oh, I'm in so much pain. Father, Father, save me. Now go, my son. Leave me. No. No. I can't leave you here. I've got to save you. You already have, Luke. You were right about me. Tell your sister. You were right. <laughs> That was awesome, right? Well, as awesome as those frameworks are, there's even more ways to think and reflect on this word salvation. Brian McLaren talks about how Paul, in his letter to the Romans and the Galatians, lays out how this salvation concept is about reconciliation. That True salvation is achieved when we're reconciled to God and when we're reconciled to one another. Reconciliation through grace, by faith. When we're reconciled within ourselves, with others, whatever their class, their ethnicity, their cultural or religious background. This is salvation. At least to one teacher. One of many teachers. But I really love that concept, that idea of being reconnected within ourselves and within others. And then, then there's John Shelby Spong. And he talks about salvation as life, as life itself. He says, Christianity has never been about believing correctly. It was never meant to provide the basis upon which believers would separate hearsay from truth. It was always a call to practice the task of living, loving, and being. For Christianity is not about religion, it's about life. We see the Christian life as a journey into the mystery of a saving God, into a new humanity, into the ability to give ourselves away to others as the mark of the presence of Christ in us. And these are all great ways to think about salvation. But, here's the thing. They're not bad. They're just 100% from a white person's perspective. All four of these authors are all white guys. And I love them dearly, and they've informed my life. But this year, I've really been challenged and stretched to wonder about things from a person of color's perspective. And so that's why I am really interested in what Lenny Duncan, an African-American preacher, has to say. And in his church, Dear Church, a love letter from a black preacher to the whitest denomination in the U.S., he said, As a pastor, I see in Scripture the story of a liberating God freeing oppressed people over and over again. God's liberating acts of love and grace are the driving force behind the narrative. By resisting nationalism and empire, that is where we find the true face of Christ. Ah, oh, man, so powerful. So in summary, you've got Rob Bell, who says salvation really is God the source. McLaren, salvation is reconciliation with God and others. Spong, salvation is life. 
Borg, salvation is these biblical frameworks, could be lots of different things. But at the root, it's transformation, both in self and in the world. And then Duncan, salvation as liberation and resistance from empire. So, church, it turns out salvation is not primarily about the afterlife, which also is a very uh, life-giving concept of salvation, but that's not the only way that we can think about salvation. It's lots of other things, too. And then I think about just a personal uh, favorite and mentor of mine, the late Reverend Chip Gunston, who simply said that salvation is his love, Jesus' love for everyone. I mean, it doesn't get much more simple but beautiful than that. So that's the word salvation. Where does it energize you? What questions do you have? Where are you challenged or stretched? What resonates deep within? I encourage you to reflect on that this week. Maybe even journal about it. Pray on it. Talk with others. Where do you have questions? How does this definition or definitions, how is it different from what you were taught about salvation. Well, next week we'll be looking at the word grace, the ambiguous, mysterious, transformative foundation of our faith, grace. Well, no matter where you're at, no matter what troubles are facing you this day, May you know and cling to those words that Paul gives to the Romans. That whoever, everyone, who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved as in rescued, as in liberated, transformed, inside and out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So today's word is the word salvation. Everyone say that word. Very good, salvation. And that word, or the various uh, different types of that word, appear almost 1,400 times in the Bible. 1,400 times. Oh, no, not 1,400 times. 500 times. Still. Ugh.